back again. Sorry about that. You just let everyone on Discord know. Oh, so annoying. Just had one of those rather annoying days where everything has been somewhat trickier than it should have been. Very frustrating, frankly. Very frustrating. Um, it's just to learn when it's live. Hope everyone else is good. One thing, I do have my tea. Something's right at least. All right, let's sort out. Uh, How's everyone doing? How's my audio? Uh, hopefully the stream rate's good. I'm not seeing drop frames at the moment. been struggling today getting the um, PCB order in the June PCB order there are a surprising number of places where you can easily make mistakes when doing PCBs you know whether that's the PCB itself making sure you've DRC and ERC um, converting it in this case because I've, I've done them in Eagle originally well not all of them but some of them um, then pulling them into um, KiCad then fixing any issues that that brings about um, then realigning silk screens and stuff because it always that conversion doesn't work very well um, then going through the panelization process, which can be a bit hiss, hit or miss. Then dealing with things like um, incomplete outlines or edge cuts. It's just, um, and some things don't convert well for me or to KiCad. Uh, so if you've got edges that have arcs on them, that won't work. You have to get rid of those first because that's not supported. The other thing I know noticed that wasn't supported on the um, import on KiCad side was rectangular or rectangles for, um, I tend to, don't manually tend to use them, but I, when you do a kind of import, for example, on um, say a logo or something like that, Eagle tends to create a um, set of rectangular elements that represent that. If you try and pull those into Kika, Kika just ignores it effectively. So yes, all sorts of wonderful fiery hoops to jump through and then some more and then some more. And I finally got all the files working. I've got them looking good. Uh, thanks Laurie. Yep. No, you haven't missed anything. I'm just talking about the PCB process and how difficult it can be. Um, and getting the panelization done. And now, having spent most of the day getting to a point where I'm happy with the uh, Gerbers that are being produced, or what I think I'm happy with Gerbers being produced are, uh, including the extra layers that I need for the... Um, 
panelisation, etc. Then you find when you upload them, some of them work, some of them don't. And um, the JL PCB, was it JLC PCB? God, losing it today. Um, you find out that, um, well, I don't quite know what's going on. It's some some of them it accepts without question. You can see the previews. You can go in and check. Others, it says, oh, yes, we've happily uploaded the file, but we can't give you a preview yet. Um, don't wait for this. Carry on with the order, etc., etc. And having waited and gone back and looked and changed a few and done that, and now I can't actually see the Gerber files that I've uploaded. So if you go to the file manager, which kind of belongs to your account, you should be able to see all of the ones that you've uploaded, but you can't always see those so now I'm totally baffled as to whether it does or does not have the Gerber files that I've given it what's more is I'm not sure if it's actually happy with those so yeah it's a bit annoying some are fine some are kind of in this mysterious um, kind of um, I don't know what you call it um, an in-between place, lost in between. Um, I've lost a word myself. Oh, neither here nor there. In other words, somewhere in the ether. So yes, I've been having fun with that, and I've got a finish that I, I'll show you the um, when I'm doing panelization wise you'll, you'll, you'll get a an idea of what's going on what's going on so I don't know what everyone else has been up to um, but I really do want to knock these uh, PCBs on there today this evening have that order confirmed um, that would be really nice so yeah several hundred dollars once more um, on PCBs uh, what else did we do this week right, let's just um, let's just quickly do one and you'll see kind of I'll give you some idea of the process so if we look at um, KeyCAD, let's just open up what is it really want here look so that's a panelized version of the uh, USB-C um, IO tile panelized in fours. Um, <laughs> you can't see is the um, all the details of the um, Gerber outputs, which is annoying. But anyhow, so that's been panelized there on a two by two basis um, which is what I'm doing for these kind of um, initial versions um, you can then output that and then look at the Gerbers to see how that presents itself uh, let me get rid of some things that you don't need Uh, like that. that just complicates things. But yeah, that one's worked okay. And if I look at um, when that gets loaded up on. Her. 
actually. Can I see? So if it all works well, you can then see the very same thing. Um, on um, JLPCB, only in this case, the one I've got is actually slightly different. So I can't find this one now, which is annoying. Hold your horses. Let me get the uh, browser up and running. Uh, what's this called? PCB prototype. Um, let me just turn uh, keycap off. So th this is kind of what you can see once you've uploaded it. So you can double check what it thinks it's got versus what you thought you sent, etc. Um, and you can also turn the layers on and off to a degree, although not completely. So for example, if I turn everything off apart from the outline, <laughs> I get more than the outline, which I don't understand. <coughs> it's very strange. There, for example. There we go. So there's the out, just the outline, and I can see the drill holes and check things like that as well, just like you do in the Gerber view, which is the local version. Um, so you can go in and check that it's interpreting. Um, in fact, this isn't a good one because. This one is very much wrong, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what this is. This must be an early failed attempt. So um, you've got all these weird tricky things, such as um, when you do Hmm, hold on. So if you look here, there should be a USB connector, right? So if we just turn those off there. Can you see the holes that you're left with? These are round holes. That is incorrect. These should be slots. And these can come out on different layers, but you should have them present on the outline layer, and they are not present on the outline layer here. So that's kind of uh oh, big trouble already. Um, hold on. So if I go back to uh, files. If I look at this one, for example, I'm not sure which one this is. Uh, that's one of the um, um, that's the prototype blade, proto blade. Um, The processing is timed out. This is always a bad sign here. You can't see that. It's on the right hand side. Damn it. Why can't you see that? Is this off screen for you guys? Let me make a slight adjustment here. It's very annoying, but yes. So if we look here, it's 
says here the processing timed out so when it was processing the Gerber files it had some sort of hiccup um, which may be a good indication that they're going to have a problem hi I post by the way welcome um, and you might not find this out properly until after you've submitted a job and then you'll get an email whenever someone looks at it at the factory or pre-production pre part of the uh, of the PCB build and then they'll send an email saying oh there's a layer missing or some such where's your outline file so here it's liked all of these see the green ticks but it hasn't liked all of the um, all of these which is bonkers really I don't know why it doesn't like that I mean this stuff is coming out from KiCad which I have less experience of than outputting from Eagle to JCB uh, JL PCB so that may have um, a bearing on this <coughs> be another item causing issues but it's kind of weird because normally what you see so if I show you um, a basket here of things you can see individual items the ones that have got previews tend to be good but the ones that don't have previews it's had issues with and I haven't even finished uploading these and that's the issue um, it's just painful really very painful because uh, it, it doesn't necessarily make a great deal of sense so which one's this channel PCB curve viewer oh, it's that same one again so yes very frustrating um, just when you think you've solved something, you have a problem. Um, so, um, Laurie's asking which PCBs I'm ordering. Well, the plan is, let me just sit back here and let's just switch to this view. So, the plan is for this PCB order, what I've prepared, although not what. JLPCB is accepting at this point. I have the. Let me go through them. I use KeyCAD rather than JLPCB because that's that may avoid doxing myself, for example. But more importantly, um, it will uh, should be correct. So this is the first one. Um, so that's the HDMI, sorry, this is the uh, USB-C I.O. or UCIO, um, which is panelized 2x2. Uh, two two. So I'm ordering that one. Um, that, that's basically I.O. over USB-C cable as well as USB or USB even. And we're using the sideband and we're also using the CC pins to detect where it's um, a host or device because it can work either way. Um, so that's those. Um, the other thing that I'm uh, mm, Change window. The other thing that I need to do is this one, uh, and I was going to panelize that so you can see how that works. Um, up 
a moment. Let's just go to one that we've already done. So if I open a recent one. So what I'm ordering are, in no special kind of order, is I'm doing some, I'm doing the prototype for the um, QSB my memory. Um, oh, every time I open a file, I have to tell this. Why is it? There's something very odd going on here. It's holding on to a window, which is really very strange. Oh, that's not very good. See that, folks? So this is, um, let's do the blades first. So this is the um, blade I'm ordering that fits, I can put a QSPI flash memory on. Very simple one that's panelized in a kind of four by six or six by four, depending whichever way you want to do it. Um, also, on the blade front, we have uh, the OLED this one, um, and I've moved the OLED connector. Sorry, the LCD connector slightly to the right. We've got a bit more room in between the components now, and enough room to fit the soldering iron tip to deal with any bridges that we might get. You know, a bit of flux. And looking at this one, yeah, no, that's right. So again, that's a four by six panel of those. Um, the next one is. Um, Proto panel um, blade, and this just has all the IOs plus ground and three volt free in a kind of servo like arrangement for breaking out the pads. Then we also have what else have we got? We have Uh, the the LED blades. I'm ordering some LED blades for everyone. I think that's all of the blades that I'm ordering. So that's four four different blades of which um, two are new proto prototypes the others are a reproduction or a refinement a slight refinement um, I don't think there's any more blades let me just double check did proto OLED QSPI mem and the LEDs. Then on the um, tile front, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got um, the micro uh, USB-C IOs and we also have the HDMIs. HDMIs, HDMI, where are we? We 
each of these ones. I say it's, basically it's a digital video and audio tile, Davi tile. Let's not use trademarks. So I'm ordering those tiles and also the final one was the um, the battery PCB which I can't seem to find on my list that one So that's it as normal and the, and the way that we get from this to um oh, we've always got some questions is the qsbi memory flash ram or both actually it will work for both lorry because they've both got the same footprint um so how do we go from this? So once we've got something in, say, KiCad, how do we take that and convert that into um, um, a panelized version? What we have to do is we I use a script called I use something called um, can't show the ID now. Hold on. Well, I've just changed that why doesn't it hold on am I selecting the right thing here why isn't it doing that oh my word I've got too many windows. Hold on. Let's use this. Um. Oh, it's working now. That's really weird. Um. So I'm using Kai Kit, um, which will eventually be a decent plugin in KiCad, but you can run it manually on the command line. It's all written in Python, it's quite useful. So what we do is we pass in some parameters to it. Hold on, let me um, make this a bit larger. Um, so we say, well, I need to have, you know, this many rows and this many columns when I panelize it. Um, the tolerance thing enables me to include stuff that's off the board a little, because otherwise it gets excluded by the script if you don't allow for some extra around it. If you've got things that overhang the PCB, for example. Uh, in this case, I want V cuts, um, which is the simplest way. You can use mouse bytes and different things. Um, I know also allowing for a little milling here that will basically take any of my straight line cuts and put corners on them. Because obviously when they mill stuff out, there's a certain resolution at which they can mill that. And it basically, so you don't get a right angled mill out, you get a curve in it. Um, 
the JLPCB is actually 0.4, but you need to specify it higher, and you, you often get better than 0.4. Or maybe the script interprets things differently. But when you, when you, if you have that value too high, it messes things up and excludes stuff that it shouldn't. And then you have to tell it where the source file is, which in this case is, um, it's in a folder called Batrich. Hold on. Called BAT uh, Reg, and the file is called Oh, there's another directory. Inside there, and then the file is called that Reg. dot keycad and then I copy this and then for the destination I do same. So it's going into the same folder, but it's going to have panel on the end of the name because it's going to create a new PCB. So once you've got that sorted and you've got your parameters here, I don't know if that's the right um, number. In fact, it's probably going to be too wide because I probably want to make it fit like. Um, I can't remember how wide these are. Hold on. How wide is this? Let me just double check something. So it's uh, 51, 51, 59, so it's about 39, 38, 39 across. So I don't think I can get three of those in, which is a shame. Times two. So I can only get two across in this case, um, two columns, which is annoying. So if I go to three, it will go beyond the hundred. Uh, and the height is. Um, About ten. It's about ten across. So I could probably I might be able to go up to ten. That might be too big. Let's try it. So I can then take this command and its parameters and I can then run it on the command line at the bottom here. Um, and then it will go off and panelize it and come back and good because it, it didn't come up with any errors which is highly unusual. I normally do. But anyhow. Um, I can then open it up. So if we switch to it, we'll see what it's done. So in the keycard window here, I'm just going to switch to. Oops. Uh, turn the ID off for a sec. And let's use this. What's this called? Batmeg panel. That one. So that is what it's produced. That starts at 15 in the corner up here and then goes down to, uh, let's see where we go down to. This corner is 9125. 9, so that's gone down too far. So we're probably going to need to take three of those off actually. 
10 down to 7. Let me just run this again with slightly less. So this is 2 by 7. And now if I look where we are, we are at uh, 92, and 15, I could probably go one more actually, 8, And now if I look where the bottom corner is, we're at uh, 103, that's fine, because we're starting off at 15. So that's about as much as I can squeeze out of. Um, let's get rid of some of this, because this is um, not, not making things clear. Let's get rid of the fab stuff. Era. And you can see where the V-cut uh, information is. Um, Laurie saying, what about the fixed proto p -motile? Yes, that's on the list as well. Um, I've already uploaded that, the JLPCB. Those are definitely part of it. Thank you, Laurie, for remembering that. Um, so this is how you get to that point. Um, there's some issues with panelization using V-cuts because you've got overlap. So for here, for example, this USB connector goes beyond the board. So this USB connector below it on the board hangs over this one. But I'm okay as long as there's nothing in this area and there's just a pad there. So that'll probably be fine. But you've got to watch things like that. Uh, likewise with the switch here, but that's just overhanging a pad, not a component on this side. So I can probably get away with it. The other advantage is to having it panelized, apart from the fact that it's you get better value for money, is when you can when you do your assembly, it's easier to assemble in panels for the smaller boards because um, you can do several at once. So yes, I've been having this kind of fun all afternoon. So then when you get that, you can then output that and create the Gerbers, which in itself has um, some gotchas. Uh, I need to take the extra layers out. I need to create a Gerber directory. Use that, yes. Then I need to plot the output, refill it, and then create the drill files, make sure those are all in the right place, and generate the map file. Then when I'm happy with all that, I can actually review to see what it looks like. So I can then switch to um, something. Um, where I can actually see what it looks like from a Gerber point of view. Um, let me just see if I can... make this a reasonable size. And let's load it up so that you guys can see it. Uh, 
Where are you? Get a few up. Okay. Um, let's bring this in a little bit. So you can then check out your Gerber files. So here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up um, the Gerbers that I've just produced. Uh, just going to pull those in and have a look. And you can see the list of uh, bits and bobs at the top. Uh, let me just turn them all off and then I can turn them on one by one. So you can actually look at the individual Gerber layers. So this is the actual output files that are going to be sent to um, um, the uh, JLP PCB. I'm not sure what those circles are on there, but these are the V cut lines so they know how to break the panel up. I'm not sure what the circle's there for. I'm surprised that's on there. Um, then you can look at the outline. Let's get rid of the uh, V cuts. So this is the actual outline of the entire thing. You need the V cuts in to see how they're broken up and the holes. Um, you can then look at things like the drills in different places. Um, you can look at the silk screen, make sure that's okay for you. Clearly, I could do a little adjustment here, some overlap. Um, you can then start looking at pads, for example or top and bottom. Um, you can also look at the copper fill. This is the top layer of the uh, copper. Um, this is the edge cuts. Why is that different to the others? Um, this is the bottom of the silk screen is why all the lettering is reversed and then um, you can look at all the pads on the top sorry that's basically the uh, the paste layer so that's what the stencil will overlay to put paste down and then that's the bottom paste layer and that's the bottom in fact, no, that's the, yeah, that's the bottom uh, copper of the PCB. So you can go in and have a good look and make sure that it's making sense in terms of the manufacturing files. And then when you're ready, you can just zip all of those up. Um, just using, you know, a zip tool. Once you've done that, you can then upload it. And if you're really lucky, JLPCB viewer will um, say, yeah, I've got that. It builds a preview image of it so you know it's interpreted properly. And then you can actually go in and look at what their Gerber view sees. Uh, Laurie's asking about the current position with the motor. I haven't done anything more because I've been trying to get this PCB order done. My plan is to assemble one. over the next few weeks. Um, once I get these PCBs off and ordered, my time will be free to worry about things like launch, which I've got to do rapidly. Um, because I do actually need to recover some funds. Otherwise I might well starve to death. Um, I've also got quite a bit to do on the documentation. Got to do some work on that as a priority. 
actually to get some of that done and then after I've done those two bits then um, I can look at uh, playing around with the motor tile. Twinkle, are you on the wrong side of the door again? How very unusual, that never happens. So it's on my list, Laurie, but there's a couple of things before it, which are a priority. So anyhow, you can see where I've been spending my time with getting these PCBs done and I need to get the rest of those off. I'm probably still going to be fiddling with this tomorrow because I don't think this is going smoothly because um, the JLC PCB viewer is not liking some of my Gerbers, which is never a good sign. What else have we been doing? Ah, well, um, I managed, I made about five of the OLED blades and there's a real problem because the components are so close to the, um, just to remind you, the components are so close to the um, Oh, I've lost me a bit of paper. Unless this one suffice. Yeah, the components are so close to the contacts on the uh, LCD connector, which you can just see there. I can't, it's not really got a macro facility. This is, this is one that went wrong. Can you see how you've got bridges this is very, very fine uh, pins on here. And I still haven't got the paste layer right for these. It's doing my head in. And um, I need to get the soldering iron in with some flux in order to um, clear the bridges on those. So I've, I've shoved that a bit further away from the components so that there's enough room to get the soldering iron tip in there. But anyhow, out of the five or six that I made, I managed to scrape together two. Quite a good one that uh, I sent off to Laurie um, at the back end of last week through the mail. And I kept one myself, which had some bridges on, but I managed to clear them. I was a bit lucky. And uh, he, um, he had to play around with it. Well, we worked out that our blade connections were enumerated around the wrong way. Um, and once he worked that out, um, he got it working, which is really cool. Really good news. Well done, Larry. And I've got one here, actually. Uh, I don't know if we can see it much. Let me turn that light off. The problem with my display I've got here, um, this was originally used for the early mezzanine board for the, one of the previous prototypes and I had real problems trying to get it to work with the connectors the FPC connectors I had at the time and I ended up bending it about a lot and I think I introduced a hairline fracture in it so I have to um, just on the edge here if I um, press it down a little um, you can see that that's working although there's quite a bit of a reflection there. I think I can that's a checkerboard pattern. Um, so I took Laurie's working code and put that on. It's annoying for me because I have to hold this one down to make it work because that hairline fracture. I haven't worked out a way of fixing that yet because it's on these are on like um, flex cables. Trying to mend a flex cable is very difficult. Um, and it's not just all over the cable, it's actually the um, display blanking, the BL line that's causing the problem, which is why it goes on and off like that. Very annoying, but anyhow it works. So that's good. Um, well done Laurie for getting that working. Um, 
I don't suppose yours is wibbly like mine. You probably uh, taken better care of your oh excuse me of your LCD display than I did. Uh, and I've only got that one at the moment. I was going to order some more. I went back to order the ones that I ordered last time and found that they're not available anymore from that supplier. But I have found another supplier. Um, Laurie also found these are 1.3 inch size IPS LCDs. Laurie found some 1.5 inch ones from Ali, on Alibaba. Um, Trouble is with the Alibaba stuff is you have to buy a reasonable quantity to make them interested. They had a uh, price break. I think they were like, I can't remember, like $7 if you buy less than 99000 And if you buy 100000 or more of them, they drop down to about $2.50 and there doesn't seem to be anything in between. Um, and I'm not going to be purchasing 100000 LCD. So... We will see. Uh, Lori says, mine works fine. I have a second LCD, which I have not tried. What What's the second LCD that you've got, Laurie? Is it an IPS one? or Do you have a link for it? And are the pinouts similar, more importantly? Because these things aren't standard, surprisingly. There is some commonality between some of them. But Has it got a 24-pin FPC? connector on it. A lot of them don't have. A lot of them use like 12 pin what they call world connectors. World being solder connectors. No, just the same. I bought two. Oh, okay. So you bought two of the same thing. I thought you had something different. I did not realize. But anyhow, that's really good news. That that's working. So that gave me some confidence to order some more um, OLED LCDs, which I'm doing, which is good. Uh, I need some water. It's pretty warm here in the UK at the moment. We're up, just entering a minor heat wave for a few days. I think it's about 28 today, C. It's going to go up to about 34 C, I think, come Friday. Which for the UK is stifling, by the way. It's never pleasant when it's hot here. <coughs> Unless you're, you know, somewhere where you can dive into the ocean or something. Um, didn't have much else on the agenda. Um, I don't know, is, it, if, is there anything you guys want to talk about? Um, I post or uh, Laurie or anyone else that's here. Um, what's Laurie saying? Uh, he did look at some of the different options that were that there were. Um, the main one he found was that 1.54 inch one on Alibaba. I think a slightly larger one would be nice but I did have a look on AliExpress to see if there were any larger ones but I couldn't find any larger ones that had um, the 24 pin FPC cable. Well, in fact I might have found one but what was it? Is that a 1.54? I can't remember now. There are many of them that have the um, 0.1 inch headers that are on a PCB. There are 1.8 inch ST7735 LCDs. They're similar but lower resolution. 1.8 inch lower resolution. Well, they um, a different aspect ratio. Is that what you mean? A lower resolution, or the combination of different aspect ratio and different number of pixels. I was looking on AliExpress to see what I could find. It was a bit hit, hit and miss. Unfortunately, finding them with the 24 pin um, FPCs is more difficult. 
And the reason we're using the FPCs is to, so that you can fit it onto the blade and also remove it, otherwise it's a bit clumsy. If it was soldered onto the blade, it might be a bit, um, a bit tricky. Holy holy ho! It's funny, I'm much warmer now than I was uh, this afternoon. It's nice and cool this afternoon here. Um, the temperature must be lagging in this room versus outside. I might let some fresh air in. Hold on. Now that it's cooling off a little. Well, let's have a look at this. Um, yeah. Express. Let me get the browser up. Let's have a look. That's weird. Why isn't that showing? Oh, I see. It should, I really wish it didn't let you select ones that weren't actually alive. Windows that you're not actually using. So this is, hold on, who are these? Make DIY store. So these are 1.8 inch TFT LCDs. These, are these IPS? I don't think they are IPS, are they? Um, oh, 128 by 60. Oh, it's a touch panel as well. I haven't seen these before, um, Laurie. That's interesting. So, what's the difference here? You can have it with touch and without touch. What's the difference in price? They're very cheap ish. Uh, 163 with no touch, 217 with touch. Um, well, that. That's going to mean that's going to be a different pinout because the touch would be on um, on the same pins, wouldn't it? LED K. Does it go up to twenty-four? Yeah, yeah. It puts the touch pins at the end, which we are not connecting to in this case. I'm trying to think, what is our pinout? I'm just going to. Whilst I'm looking at that, let me just dig out the um, OLED pinout. Uh, get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Save. Let's go to KeyCAD. Let's open the OLED schematic. Now, the OLED schematic tells me. Okay, so let's go through the pins. So the blank, let's 
sorry, the um, backlight control, pin one. Yeah. And then the ground for the uh, backlight and ground generally. Power supply for the LCD. There's normally three volts, no connection. I've got that at three volts. And then chip select pin. Mm. No, it's a, it's a, the pins are in a different order. Sorry. Oh, wait a minute, no. Five and six. Five to six? Is that five to six? Five to six. One minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I've got reset. And then CS. Looks like the CS and the reset are in opposite order, Laurie. But you could, that that's just changing the um, HDL. DCX command. Um, I've got that as clock. And then write enable. And then read. One, two, three. See, 11 is RDX, which we don't use. Uh, I'm a bit confused by their interface. They don't have a Serial in. Is that right? And which one's the clock? Wow, this is very confusing. I don't understand their pinout. They're either missing pins or they're not naming what the pins are correctly. It's a bit strange, this pinout. Um, sorry, I don't understand. What's the dimensions of these displays, anyhow? 33 by Yeah, I just don't understand their pinout, Laurie. I mean, which line is the clock? What's the serial clock? Not obvious, is it? It's like it doesn't support serial. It only supports parallel, which is unusual. They normally support both, Laurie. I've not seen one that just supports parallel for a long time. So these pins often double up as different functions. You normally have, in the description, it normally says, um, you know, in parallel mode, it, this pin is this, and in serial mode, it's this. But these only seem to talk about parallel. So, I mean, 
we have clock on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which would be the DCX pin. But they don't seem to have any um, serial operation described. Needs to be parallel only. Which is slightly odd. In fact, it's very unusual. To be fair, very unusual indeed. Especially for such a low res resolution display. Display peripheral dimensions 34 by 45 by 2.4. The peripheral size 34 by 45 by 3.65. Uh, the chip resolution. Display interface, yeah, it just says 8 bit parallel port, that's it. Number of pins 24 pin. So that wouldn't work with the blade as is, unless it's got something undocumented. Um, what else do these people sell then? What's this? Is that what we're looking at? It's 14 pin, that's really unusual. I've never seen a 14 pin one. I mean, that's SPI, obviously. Yeah. Plug no touch, weld no touch, <laughs> weld with touch. <laughs> weld adapter, <laughs> adapter. Interesting store. Um, what's this one? 2.4. Four inch three three twenty by two forty that's got a smaller connector in it. Type one, type two, what's the difference? With welding type <laughs> just made me laugh. Welding I don't think it's welding. That type five of touch. I wonder how many pins the type five has. That's a seven seven eight nine. Pin description. It's only up to eighteen pins, that one. Maybe there's different ones if we scroll down. Are they all eighteen pins? That looks like it's got more pins. Not clear. Not clear at all. How can they all be 18 pins? They don't look 18 pins. Damn. Um. That looks like it's got loads of pins, that one. What's this? Some of these have clearly got a lot more pin than others. What's this one? 2.8 inch. SPI. 18 pin. Hmm. Isn't it good that they're all such standard, these connectors? They refer to the ribbon connector as a welding connector. Now I think that the welding connector, Western Long, is, um, is the one that you can you solder 
So it doesn't go into a connector, an FPC. You actually solder it to the back of the board and it tends to be a lower density, like 12 pins or whatever. Normally, I mean, the connectors on these are very strange actually, rather unusual. In terms of the number of pins, I don't know how many pins that's got. That's parallel. Thirty seven pins. Bonkers. Stuff's all over the place, isn't it? Yeah, I hadn't seen these people before, um, Laurie. I still haven't managed to find one that they do that fits the 24 pin. The 24 pin they've got is a parallel only. Uh, was it this one that we looked at? 40 pin. No. That's entirely different. It's a good price though. Is that 16? Yeah, 16 bit parallel. 480, 320. Hmm. I'll put that in my cart. Look at that later. Um, hmm. Yeah, the one that you're looking at may be parallel only. Hi, Westernall. I think the 320 ST 7789 were mainly parallel only. I just wish the bloody connectors were a bit more consistent. It's all very... Um, Random on the connector front. I wonder if there's any other. More to love. These are all four pin, 40 pins. These are the ones we started off looking at, aren't they? The weird parallel pin out. I'm really surprised they don't support serial as well. It's unusual. Because the chip supports it. 3.2 inch. PFTs. IPS. Um, what I tend to do is um, just have a look at you know ST seven seven eight nine. Uh, even that's not particularly reliable, but that enables you to find things like this. So this is very similar. This is the twelve pin version. Or the 24 pin. So this is these ones will work. <laughs> I love this one. They call it iron frame. If you scroll down, it has an iron frame. <laughs> Brilliant. Just what you need solid iron frame on your LCD. Yeah, what minute does it say here? Yeah, look, upper and lower, full iron frame. That's <laughs> bonkers. <laughs> this is going to make it really heavy. Maybe it's aluminium, not iron. But anyhow, yeah, those are quite good. Because these are the right pinouts. Um, this is 
12 pin. This is the 24 pin. These work. These are like the ones that we've got. Doesn't show you the pin out for those, which is interesting. Plane drawing. Yeah, connection type. 12 pin is welded. 24 pin is plugged. Uh, number of pins. 12 pin for soldering and 24 pin for plug in. <laughs> I don't think they'd survive welding. They would just melt on those flex cables. So yeah, um, we know these sort of ones work. Uh, who else did I see? Who do 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 do? One point six nine. These are weird because they've got like curved edges, but that's on a PCB. One of these. These must be very similar. Yeah, these are very similar. Welded type or spliced type, look. What's the splice type? Is that what we use, splice type? 240 by 240. Are these... Um... Oh, it doesn't actually give you the pinouts. There's 12, I think. Difficult to read, that might be 24. Difficult to tell, frankly. And there's no pinouts. Some of these really give you no information at all. You'd be taking a right punt buying some of these. It's incredibly um, uninformative. But there are quite a few different ones. There's a 1.3 inch here. That's a 24 pin. Shenzhen, high quality. Don't you just feel the comfort from buying with from such a name? Uh, yeah, I think that's similar to ours, pinout wise. Oh, wait a minute, DC. Yeah. And they don't always use the same naming convention for the pins, which is a bit annoying. But that would probably work, that one. By the looks of it. How much is £4.28? Those are much more expensive. And you still pay a pound shipping on top. There's a few out there, display-wise. 2.8 pin inch. This comes with different controllers. 16 bit, 8 bit. Does that not do SPI then? Oh, no information whatsoever. Never. Oh, very, very useful. Nothing. No pinouts, nothing. Look at this. 24 pence, but I bet the shipping is like really expensive. Oh, yeah, they're a really trustworthy outfit. The LCD is 24 pence, and the shipping is £3.33, for Christ's sake. How very ridiculous! Really, he's going to eyes to touch screen. <sighs> They actually provide the pinouts. Do for the 12 pin. Twenty four pin. Yeah, if you wanted to try your luck with these guys, that might work.
so there's a few vendors of that sort of display those are the, the ones that you probably um, probably would want yeah I always I'm always less keen on these people that advertise for such stupidly low prices and then have ridiculous shipping in comparison I mean it's just untrustworthy from the start although look review wise I've done alright mind you it's only free orders uh, Laurie um, says on another subject are you still looking for some more early adopters yes I am do you have some in mind Laurie I do need early adopters. We all do. One of those, 2.4. Super wide visual angle. Oh, it's a bit slow. Hmm. Yeah, stupid prices, but it's gonna you're gonna pay for it in shipping. Three point five inch. Forty pin. No good. Uh, Laurie saying, I thought discussing the board on one bit squared FPGA channel might get some interest. Do you have power keys? No. I do. Do you want to have some? Uh, yeah. Do you want to come and pick it up? Because I'm streaming. Uh, well, you know where I am. Come and pick it up, and I'll give it to you. Oh, such dependence. Um, yeah, I mean, I probably, I'm not sure I'd consider it right for me to bring it up on those channels, but you lot are welcome to. I think it'd be a bit rude of me to just put my stuff on you know on bit squared's channel but if other people are on there talking about things then yeah that's a problem i just don't want to be seen as out there pushing my stuff on his um on his channels if you see what i mean but it's quite okay for other people to do it i don't have a problem with that at all I mean, I may discuss it when I'm talking to um, TNT about the hyperflash stuff, but I haven't made his board up yet, so I'm not going to talk to him directly until I have. I also want to make sure that he's got a USB, sorry, USB connection, because he needs that for his stuff. Direct to the FPGA. Uh, I see I see that Glasgow is starting to ship now hurrah brilliant I'm waiting for mine and the icebreaker is available again so people have some other options for ice 40 boards that's good it's good that they're shipping because getting anything and shipping it right now is um Pretty difficult, let me tell you. I'm really pleased it's got Glasgow out. I can't wait to get mine actually. Um, but yeah, good point. Please, yeah, feel free to mention on on any of those um, channels. 
um, we do need to get the word out. Please mention it anywhere and everywhere where there may be some interest. Folks, I appreciate you um, letting other people know that it's available. I'm, I'm, I am making them available to the public. So now is a good time to start talking about it, definitely. Or them. What's this 1.8 inch arm? What? I don't think that's 40 pin. What do they mean arm? Why don't they put the information in there? That's a 7735. Yes, yeah, a low res one. 18 pin. They like their 18 pin connectors, these people. What's this one? 3.5. IPS. That looks like a massive connector. Yeah, it's a 40. 40 pinner. Yeah, please get the word out there, folks. I appreciate it. Because I'm going to start tweeting publicly about stuff as well soon. Um, I've got to be working on the documentation from tomorrow. Uh, 2.4, 2.2, I think I've looked at these ones, I think these are 40 pin cables, oh 18 pin cables, mm. damn it, they're all different cables, resistance touch panel 3.5 inch LCS, IPS4, what's this one, oh it's a touch panel, that's not actually, an LCD. Interestingly, did we look at this one already? Yes, the 40 pin one. one. 2.4. 24 pin. Is that parallel only? or eight doesn't make any difference I bet um, does this have description 2.4 inch 2.4 inch pin Ectro circuit connection what how does that mean is this parallel only though Doesn't say anything about serial. Oh, hear me. Yeah, that seems to be parallel only. Which is a real shame. I look quite nice. 2.4 inch. Uh, Esden is having to make them all himself, so the rollout might be slow. Yeah, I'm not expecting it to be super fast. Oh, right. Anything else we want to cover? That's enough of looking at LCD displays. I seem to spend far too much time on AliExpress looking at things like this. Still waiting for some stuff to arrive. Did you say that um, you weren't sent some stuff? I post. I post says I've held up on ordering from AliExpress for a while. I lost seventy dollars when packaging didn't arrive this month. Are you sure it's just not stuck in the um, 
or when a package didn't arrive I'm sure it's not stuck in shipping because shipping's taking forever at the moment it's actually um, a massive problem it's taking me a lot longer to get stuck now than it used to some of these too many windows some sugar Oh, he says I still don't have much plan to do with what to do with my board until the new tiles and blades arrive. I will probably extend my SPI peripheral to test test to write text of EGA in the LCD screen. Good idea. Also need to look at the um, why the Amaranth Orchard Hyperflash driver wasn't working. Yeah, that's a good point. It'd be nice to crack that one. Um, well, if there isn't anything else, guys, I'm probably going to get on with some stuff. in my case means boring PCB panelization and uploading again in order to see if I can get JLPCB recognizing them for purpose which I'm not going to do on the stream because it's very boring IPO said it had been three months for that package everything else I ordered came super early So if you don't get from Ali, can you um, make a claim on it? Or more importantly, is it worth making a claim on it? Do they actually do anything? Like refund the amount or anything? Sat in China for two months alone. Was this during lockdown or something? Um, 
I post. Because a lot of my stuff did that at one point. I had all sorts sitting in uh, China. PCBs, components, you name it. Just didn't move anywhere for a while. Do 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 do. It's been a very long day. I was up at the crack of dawn this morning. I uh, couldn't sleep. So if there's nothing anyone else wants to cover, I may call uh, the stream a bit of a short one tonight. But um, I've got to go and hack away a bit more at these. Um, Gerbers and find out why JL PCB is not is not liking them for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I'm getting some drop frames as well. All right, guys. Well, listen, let's just call it for this stream. Um, I may give you an update on Friday if I have time. If not, it'll be next Wednesday. Um, my plan is to get these PCBs ordered. That is, once I've sorted out the issues that JLPCB are having with my Gerbers. And then I'm straight on to the documentation. I've got to get the basic documentation out. I'm ready for launch. Okay. And I appreciate your patience, folks. I will be down on Discord if anyone wants to talk about anything else. But otherwise, have a, uh, have a nice evening, everyone. Uh, or afternoon, if you're stateside. Ciao.